Greetings citizens of the world. On Tuesday, President Donald Trump clarified his stance on Russian election meddling after broad outrage over comments he made while in Helsinki, Finland, with Russian President Vladimir Putin. As soon as eagle-eyed viewers noticed what Trump wrote on the back of his Tuesday statement, however, they began freaking out once again. According to USA Today, President Donald Trump on Monday heard strong denials from Russian President Vladimir Putin that Moscow interfered with the 2016 election, bringing swift condemnation from members of Congress from both parties. I have great confidence in my intelligence people, but I will tell you that President Putin was extremely strong and powerful in his denial today, Trump said at a joint news conference with the Russian president. I have President Putin, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this, I don't see any reason why it would be. The president's handling of Putin during the meeting drew scathing reactions from lawmakers who claimed Trump was siding with Russia over U.S. intelligence agencies. Senator Bob Corker, RTN, for example, said Trump had made the United States look like a pushover and that the president's remarks saddened him. Corker added that he thought Putin was likely celebrating the outcome of the meeting. I would guess he's having caviar right now, said Corkar, chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Likewise, Senator John McCain, R. Oz, described the meeting in Helsinki as a tragic mistake, saying, no prior president has ever abased himself more abjectly before a tyrant. McCain, the chairman of the Senate Armed Services Committee, added, President Trump proved not only unable but unwilling to stand up to Putin. If Trump called Putin a liar to his face, these liberals and rhinos would be complaining that Trump ignited World War III. Trump simply stated that had great confidence in his intelligence people, but Putin was extremely strong and powerful in his denial. It doesn't sound like he called either side a liar. It was a very diplomatic answer. With the leftists and rhinos still fuming over Trump's meeting with Putin, the president clarified his stance on Russian election meddling Tuesday. I have on numerous occasions noted our intelligence findings that Russia attempted to interfere in our elections, Trump told the press pool at the White House. We will do anything to prevent that interference in 2018. According to the Daily Caller, during the short briefing, Trump reiterated that there was no collusion between his campaign and Russia. The president made sure to do so according to some handwritten notes on his printed statement. The sentence there was no collusion was written out in black marker along with a note saying taxes 2.0, permanent middle class tax cuts. Seizing on the opportunity to attack the president, social media users noted that he had misspelled the word collusion in his notes. The president wrote in Sharpie there was no collusion during a meeting with congressional members. Trump wrote there was no collusion in Sharpie on printed statement, misspelled collusion. This criticism, of course, is absolutely ridiculous. After all, who hasn't misspelled a word in their own notes? If the world was given a peek into the handwritten notes of your average American, they'd probably be chock full of spelling and grammatical errors. Who cares? The notes Trump added to his Russia statement were simply last-minute reminders of sentiments he did not want to forget to convey. They were reminders for his benefit, as long as he could discern what they said, they served their purpose. Lots of people take quick, shorthand notes in their own style and no one thinks to impugn their intelligence when every word isn't spelled correctly because it's not like we're talking about a published essay or something else of the sort. If the president's typed Russia statement had been laden with errors, perhaps people would have legitimate reason to show such concern. But we're simply talking about a few handwritten notes Trump made at the last minute to use as personal reminders. And it was one word. Good grief.